Testing of his engines on Lake Winnebago, adjacent to his Wisconsin plants in Fond du Lac and Oshkosh, left Kike for feeling vulnerable to the competition's spying eyes. The feeling was shared about the testing area in Siesta Key, Florida, where endurance testing became a near impossibility due to interference by both commercial and pleasure boat traffic. Kikafer's frustration and obsession with secrecy led him to crisscross the state of Florida in an airplane in search of a lake he could utilize for testing. He finally found his lake. Located somewhere near St. Cloud, Florida, Kikafer first leased and finally purchased what came to be known as the mysterious and private Lake X. He transformed the 14,000-acre lake with seven miles of shoreline and its surrounding land into the most prestigious marine high-performance proving grounds in the world, where he ran his engines and teams of drivers day and night, refueling on the fly to prove the reliability of his products. It's there that in 1957, he staged Operation Atlas, a 25,000-mile endurance run, a distance equal to a complete circumnavigation of the world. Running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, the endurance run went on for 34 days, 11 hours, and 47 minutes, completing 4,516 laps of Lake X. In 1960, a plant was built in St. Cloud, Florida for the manufacture of a complete line of Mercury's accessories, Quicksilver, improving dealer service and customer satisfaction. Throughout the 50s, Kikafer entertained dozens of offers for merger from larger companies. He considered it for obvious reasons, the opportunity for better manufacturing facilities and greater research into new technologies and product development to remain competitive. But a merger would also afford Carl security in knowing his organization could survive without him. A serious bidding war began between the Brunswick Corporation and Brunswick's direct competition, AMF, the American Machine and Foundry Company. In January of 61, Brunswick offered Kikafer $30 million in cash and stock. In May of 61, AMF made an offer to Kikafer of more than $33 million in cash and stock over four years and leave him in place as president of Mercury. In June of 61, Brunswick countered again. Sensing an insincerity of some of the contractual language and a perceived lack of flexibility with the AMF offer, on July 26, 1961, the savvy Kikafer signed a preliminary agreement with Brunswick. And in September of 61, he officially signed the documents giving Brunswick control of his empire. It was shortly thereafter that the entire marine industry found itself in the midst of a severe economic downturn. Mercury was forced to either offer stock for public sale or merge with Brunswick. Carl decided to merge, and Kikafer Mercury was formed. It was also in 61 that Kikafer would begin manufacturing the Merck Cruiser stern drive. Ten years before, Charlie Strang had shown Carl the idea for the stern drive, but Kikafer, to put it mildly, thought it was a terrible idea. In 1960, Mercury engineers designed the first stern drive unit, an external drive system like an outboards, which was attached to an inboard engine. Introduced to the public in 1961, the stern drive was the perfect fusion of Mercury outboard safety and engineering with a large inboard's convenience, power, and fuel economy. Christened Merc Cruiser, the engine single-handedly transformed the future of marine engine technology. But it didn't exactly start out that way. The initial showing at the Chicago Boat Show received a cool reception. Accustomed to outboard power, boat builders were skeptical to this new inboard-outboard engine. But when Kikafer entered a pre-production model in the 1961 Miami to Nassau race and won, he proved the dependability, speed, and performance of the stern drive. And ever since, Merck Cruiser has continued to earn its position as the leader in marine propulsion, not just through countless racing victories, but with unprecedented acceptance among consumers and boat builders alike. Merck Cruiser quickly became the boat builder's choice. It would be the first 100-horsepower production stern drive propulsion system. Not to be outdone, in 1962, the industry's first 100-horsepower outboard would be introduced. And on the suggestion by Charlie Strang's mother to reduce the appearance of the size, be painted black. Thus beginning the tradition of the entire line of Mercury products being phantom black in color.